Hello YouTube, this is Prometea, you're watching Tyrannosaurus Girl and today I'm answering the question Are you attracted to men or women? Well I have made reference to my sexuality before but I wanted to talk more specifically about this since I got a very good question which is actually a bit more complex than that the question actually read, uh, you don't understand if you're attracted to men or to women because what wakes your erotism is not a secondary sexual characteristic but the person's agalma. And that's a beautiful choice of a word that they had to look up in the dictionary and so that you don't have to do it as well. Uh, it is a Greek word that means the ornaments, gifts and statues offered in a temple. So the way that I understand that is was intended is uh, to refer to how the person uh, presents themselves, how they decorate, how they orn themselves, how they handle themselves. And uh, yeah, it is uh, very true in a way, I have to agree with that, uh, although maybe not 100% in my personal experience, because that's, I think, uh, an ideal thing to only be attracted by that but in reality I think that there are two extremes there are people that can only experience sexual attraction if they also have an emotional attraction for the person those usually call themselves demisexual and on the other extreme we have people who are incapable of an emotional connection if they don't have sexual attraction and most people are somewhere in between and so am I. I. I personally cannot really separate the two. I wouldn't call myself demisexual because I can't feel sexual attraction for, to someone that I don't really know anything about, so I don't have an emotional connection for them, but I don't feel like acting on that. I don't find it interesting if I don't find the person interesting in other aspects as well. Uh, I wouldn't have sex with someone I can't have a conversation with even if I'm not planning to have like a long-term relationship. It's not a secondary sexual characteristics or primary either, uh, but it does affect in some way. I would like to say that physical aspects don't matter, but to some point they do. We, a lot of people have those limitations and I'm not strange to that. I think that the person writing this may be what we call pansexual and that's great but not all of us are uh, some of us cannot get past certain barriers that we have i think assuming that being pansexual is better than i don't know it's something else i do experience certain limitations when it comes to uh, what can be a turn-off for me in regards of uh, physical things on the person including uh, sexual characteristics specifically which is why i cannot blame if uh, someone feels the same when in me. So when it comes to my sexual attraction, I've always said I like women and uh, of course that's an overstatement because I don't like the majority of women, I only like a few and uh, I know that I'm not attracted to men but it is a bit more complex than that. I have experienced attraction for other trans women whether they have had bottom surgery or not was not relevant at the time because nothing was really going to happen but I know that if we have had something reaching the point of intimacy, if they had not had bottom surgery, it would be a challenge for me. Uh, I'm not saying I couldn't get past it, but I don't like penises. It may be related with my own dysphoria, but I don't like that. But I know that if I were to fall for another trans woman and be reciprocated, her having a penis would be a challenge. A challenge that I would attempt, but I don't know if I'd be able to pass it or not, so we would both have to really be on the same page on that, so that we don't get more hurt than necessary. If we go to the opposite of that, uh, having a vagina is not automatic, because I don't like not just cisgender men, but also transgender men. I know that if I were to have a partner who, at the moment of meeting them, I thought they were a woman, uh, but they later came out as trans and decided to transition. I would like to believe that I would stand by them since they would be the same person, but that would also be a challenge since, in a way, the physical attraction 
with change. And of course it is complex because then you begin to ask yourself what is it? Is it the secondary characteristic that uh, can kill off an attraction? And I don't know. I've experienced attraction for cisgender women with flat chests. I've experienced attraction for cisgender women with hairy bodies. I've experienced attraction for cisgender women with very fit muscular bodies. I've experienced attraction for cisgender women with pretty masculine behavior and I've even recently experienced attraction for a non-binary transmasculine person that is someone that doesn't identify as either man or woman but their gender presentation is towards the masculine side. So if it's not their behavior, if it's not the genitals, if it's not their gender presentation, if it's not their physical body, what is it that differentiates us and that can allow us to be attracted to someone or not? Is it just self-identification? How the person defines themselves? Quite unlikely, but then what is it? That's a very good question that I don't have an answer for. And it's also part of why uh, I'm not so sure about simply calling myself a lesbian anymore, but I'd rather call myself queer because I know that uh, the spectrum of people that I have been attracted, that I can be attracted to, is wider than just women, but it's definitely complex. So I would like to know what you think about this, what are your feelings about sexual attraction and emotional attraction to other people, does their gender affect you, uh, does their gender presentation, what makes a difference for you? Please tell me here in the comments, also send me the questions that you want me to answer either here on YouTube or through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr or Ask.fm. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, share it around and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. See you next week, bye bye!